We will now talk about how biologists study gene expression to analyze genes implicated in the diaxic shift. Let's make a simple experiment. Let's measure expression of three genes at seven checkpoints before and after the diaxic shift. And each element in the resulting 3 by 7 matrix is the expression level of gene I at checkpoint J. What is the expression level? Well, one gene in each genome may generate many transcripts, while another may generate few transcripts. Expression level is the relative measurement of the number of transcripts in the cell. And we can visualize this seven mere expression vector as a plot on seven point. And looking at this plot, you can immediately say that the blue gene most likely has nothing to do with the diaxic shape because the expression of this gene doesn't change before and after the diaxic shape. However, the green gene most likely is implicated in the diaxic shape because its expression increases, and the red gene also most likely implicated in the diaxic shape because its expression is decreasing. Instead of analyzing expression levels directly, Biologists often prefer to study logarithm of expression level, and we will follow this approach. Below this slide, you see expression level represented as logarithm. Uh, we just need to remember that positive expression levels, after transforming to logarithm, correspond to increase in the expression of gene, and negative expression level, after transforming to logarithm, corresponds to decrease in the gene expression. Uh, and here's a little bit larger 10 by 7 gene expression matrix, and these 10 genes also below shown as plots. Can we cluster these genes into groups of genes with similar behavior? Each row in the gene expression matrix corresponds to gene expression vector, and you can see the plot of this gene expression vector at the bottom. And clearly, just a look at this uh, picture at the bottom, reveals three types of behavior. Increasing expression, corresponding to green genes, flat, corresponding to blue genes, and red, corresponding to genes whose expression is decreasing. And, in fact, in 1997, Joseph de Rizzi constructed much larger gene expression matrix by measuring gene expression for 6,400 ES genes, nearly all ES genes, before and after the diaxic shift. And the goal he tried to achieve by using this gene expression matrix was to partition all ES genes into cluster so that genes in the same clusters have similar behavior and genes in different clusters have different behavior. Uh, we can also represent genes as point in multidimensional space so that n times m gene expression matrix will turn into n points in m-dimensional space, and our 10 genes will turn into these 10 points, and we clearly see uh, that blue points that, uh, whose expression remain flat Cluster together, the same is true for green points and red points. However, I'm cheating here because our points are actually points in seven dimensional space. We measure gene expression at seven checkpoints. But here, I show these points in two dimensional space. How have I done it? In fact, the clustering problem is much harder than it looks because there is so called curse of dimensionality of studying uh, clustering of points in multidimensional places, uh, spaces. So far, we talked about uh, each gene expression, but we can also talk about expression of uh, genes implicated in cancer. In 1999, Uri Alon measured expression of 2,000 genes from 40 samples of colon tumors from tumor, uh, cancer patients and compared it 
with the gene expression matrix constructed for the same 2,000 genes for healthy patients. In this case, the result is not one, but two 2,004 by 40 gene expression matrices. And the goal in this case is to find genes with significantly different expression vectors in tumor patients as compared to healthy people. And these genes, if found, would represent potential cancer biomarkers that can be used for cancer diagnostics. So, if we look at the healthy genes in the healthy patient in multidimensional space, then for this, let's say, 10 genes, let's not, don't change the expression matrix, we will see a picture like this. But if we superimpose it with the expression level for a cancer patient, and I represent them by different type of circles, let's say for, you see that for blue genes, uh, expression level in cancerous patients and in healthy patients are roughly the same. But in green genes and in red genes, they differ. And thus, potentially, uh, green genes or red genes represent potential, I emphasize potential, cancer biomarkers. In fact, there are already uh, approaches to cancer diagnostics, such as mammoprint, that test, that is a test that evaluates the likelihood of breast cancer recurrence based on the expression level of just 70 genes. The question that we will be interested in, how did scientists discover these 70 human genes implicated in breast cancer? But to answer this question, we need to formulate clustering as an optimization problem.